So this talk is entitled, What is the BMHR and Why Do We Need It? The BMHR, or the mini-hip, as some of my patients now call it, is positioned between hip resurfacing and total hip replacement. It's useful for those patients who want a resurfacing, but whose femoral head bone stock is not good enough to have a resurfacing, and they don't want a total hip. It carries the same advantages as hip resurfacing in that the femoral component is easily revisable if required to a total hip replacement because the canal of the femur has not been touched. However, unlike hip resurfacing, the BMHR can deal with bone loss in the top part of the femoral head um, or as I'll show you can also deal with peculiar anatomy to restore that anatomy much better than a, a hip resurfacing. Now if we take uh, the results of total hip replacement in osteonecrosis or avascular necrosis as it's also called, so dead femoral heads then the results published for total hip replacement vary markedly as you can see from 0% failure rate to 66.9% failure rate so there's a huge variation in the published failure rates of total hip replacement but this is a very nice uh, matched pair study and uh, osteonecrosis is in the blue on the bottom uh, and osteoarthritis patients are on the top and you can see that uh, at all the time periods out to 12 years uh, osteonecrosis patients have a worse outcome a significantly worse outcome than patients with osteoarthritis when treated with a stem total hip replacement and if you look at the results there we've got about a 30% failure rate of total hip replacement at 12 years which is not very good. If we look at my series of hip resurfacing in osteonecrosis or avascular necrosis um, I'm presenting to you the results of 104 hips in 97 patients and three quarters of them were under the age of 55. So this is the etiology broken down for you in my patients and the biggest group is still idiopathic which means that we don't know what caused the avascular necrosis in those particular patients. When we look at the staging of procedures we don't do resurfacing or total hip replacement in stage 1 or stage 2 and those patients uh, we try and preserve the hip with a joint preserving uh, procedure. Uh, like a decompression or an osteotomy. But in stage 3 and stage 4, then they're past the stage of conservative procedures and we do a, a hip arthroplasty of some sort. So the group uh, have a mean follow up of 6.7 years, ranging from 3 years to 12.4 years. Here's an example of a 28 year old man with bilateral. Uh, osteonecrosis on the right side stage 3 and on the left side stage 2 and uh, there we are five years four months post-operatively we've done a core decompression on his left side and a Birmingham hip resurfacing on his right side and he's got a perfect outcome this is a 35 year old man very unfortunate trauma uh, he sustained a uh, femoral head fracture in a separate incident of trauma had that fixed and then sustained a femoral neck fracture and had that fixed also uh, but he's got very extensive avascular necrosis and you can see again I've done a Birmingham hip resurfacing and at five years he's fine and he works as a steel erector and is delighted with his hip um, this is a 48 year old man with stage 4 osteonecrosis and 6 years 3 months after his Birmingham hip resurfacing he has a clinically and radiographically perfect outcome. Another one, 42 year old man with avascular necrosis 10 year 2 months after a McMinn resurfacing good outcome. 
But the difficulties with avascular necrosis is that first uh, they're prone to further collapse. And I'll show you an example now. This man, uh, the etiology in his hip was alcoholic uh, avascular necrosis. And on the MRI scan on the right, you can see that it appears that the area of dead bone in the femoral head is fairly localized. And I felt that we could get away with a resurfacing. At two months, the x-ray looks great. But unfortunately, two years, ten month x-ray, you can see that the femoral head has collapsed and uh, the femoral component has uh, migrated into varus. So that is the commonest failure pattern uh, when you do a hip resurfacing in the face of avascular necrosis, further collapse of the head. There's also a slightly higher infection rate. Uh, we think that's in a group of patients who've had chemotherapy and have had their uh, immune systems damaged in the past. When you look at the uh, survivorship curve of my resurfacings, then you can see that it all goes wrong between three years and seven years. And there's a stepping down on that survivorship curve and those that's where a lot of failures are occurring and uh, at 10 years I've got a 90% implant survivorship so 90% of the patients are fine but a 10% failure rate at 10 years makes me uncomfortable with doing hip resurfacing in avascular necrosis patients. Now other uh, types of arthroplasty have been tried. Um, this is the Freeman uh, neck preserving stem and uh, these slides I've got are uh, from Dr. Sugano who's giving me permission to use them, uh, a colleague from Osaka in Japan and he's used the Freeman stem with a, a Birmingham hip resurfacing modular head and a BHR cup and uh, he's done a very good job on the uh, femur and in this particular type of total hip replacement most of the femoral neck is retained and you can see on the left there uh, all that retained femoral neck but on the right at six months you can see that that femoral neck unfortunately has largely melted away and he doesn't just have one case he's got a number of cases like this and he's also backed these playing radiographs up with DEXA scan studies which again show that proximally the bone is melting away so in this particular type of arthroplasty yes we've managed to be conservative in that we retain the uh, femoral neck but because the implant is jammed into the femur and loads onto the cortex of the shaft of the femur you get proximal stress shielding and the proximal bone in the femoral neck tends to melt away. So as I've shown you if the femoral neck is not loaded it tends to melt away and the question then is can we get over that? Level A is the resection level typical of a total hip replacement. Level B is the level of resection in, for example, that Freeman stem that I just showed you from Dr. Sagano. But there's no point in retaining the femoral neck if you don't load the femoral neck. If you don't load it, it melts away. I want to introduce you to level C which is a very unusual uh, level of resection and that's the uh, level of resection for this mid-head resection prosthesis and level D is the resection level for a Birmingham hip resurfacing. Now I want you to look on the lateral film I've split this cadaveric femur into four and if you look on the right on the lateral film the area of interest is the tapering region from the head into the neck and that's a cone 
or we can manufacture a cone out of that at surgery. And a proximal cone is very good news for us because that is a beautiful area to transfer load. And if you can transfer load up in the cone, then that will load the femoral neck and stop it melting away. So there in a plastic bone I've manufactured a cone and there's the original BMHR uh, prosthesis and you can see that that cone with the implant in it acts a bit like a stopper in a bottle. Uh, you don't need a big stem on it to give axial uh, stability. Uh, the cone, once it's in, once the stopper is in your bottle, uh, it won't go any further. There's the BMHR uh, in place and there's a, a modular head put on top and if you didn't know what was inside from the outside it looks exactly like a Birmingham hip resurfacing. There's the uh, implant or that original BMHR implant drawn on those bones and the big area of interest is on the right side where the cone of the implant fits into the conical base of head and transition area into the femoral neck. At surgery there's the implant in place and you can see that the base third approximately of the femoral uh, head has been retained. You cannot of course use a small head, that's a 28 millimeter head that we would normally use in total hip replacement with a polyethylene articulation. You have to use a large head to get a proper head neck ratio and there is the large modular head in place and that extends down to the medial head neck junction just like a, a, a Birmingham hip resurfacing. So here's a patient with uh, bilateral avascular necrosis. On the uh, left side I've done a core decompression and that hip is okay but on the right side there is extensive necrosis and far beyond any uh, conservative uh, surgery. You can see on the MRI scan that virtually all of the femoral head is involved in the avascular necrosis process. Uh, I did a BMHR on him and there's his x-ray out at one year. The sticky out parts on the stem are markers for RSA migration measurement. And uh, you can see at a year that unlike those uh, slides from Dr. Sagano, this man's femoral neck has not melted away and that's good evidence that load is being passed through that femoral uh, neck to cause it to stay in place and that again supports the idea that the cone is a very effective load transfer mechanism. Another patient, again the one year film shows the bone in the femoral neck has been retained and on the lateral Again, you can see retention of femoral neck bone. The RSA migrations on uh, these 13 patients out to two years show no measurable migration. And you will know from some of our other talks that RSA migration at two years is a very good indicator that you're not going to have loosening out to 10 years. So it's a good way of getting a forward look on an implant, how it's going to do. So all the 13 patients that I did have a perfect clinical and radiographic outcome. And the Oxford scores are 12, which is the best Oxford score you can get. But there were some problems that we didn't anticipate. The curved stem of the implant, I made it curved to get rotational control but at surgery although you can machine the proximal cone very easily on a guide bar it does require the surgeon to line up the stem of the implant uh, and the brooch that goes before the implant exactly with the proximal cone and I found that very technically challenging uh, to do and I decided eventually that that would be too challenging an implant uh, for wide use. 
So in order to get the uh, rotational control that we need on an implant for early fixation, I went with a straight stem with longitudinal flutes uh, distally and porous and hydroxyapatite proximally. So this implant, the straight stem BMHR, is exactly the same proximal load transfer mechanism, but the rotational control that you require for a few weeks to allow proximal osseointegration is different. Uh, we get that instead of uh, the curved stem, we get it through longitudinal flutes on the uh, straight stem. But of course, technically, it's much easier to do all of the preparation of the bone can be done on a guy bar. Here's a patient whose left hip has severe osteonecrosis and I decided that this was too extensive for uh, hip resurfacing. There's the template for the uh, size 4 BMHR stem uh, in place and it just shows you the alignment that uh, we're wanting to achieve. There you can see his uh, pre-operative x-ray and uh, the six-month film. Everything looks great and he is delighted with his hip. We can, as I mentioned uh, earlier in my uh, talk, deal with bizarre anatomy. And this man has had uh, Perthes disease in the past and also has had uh, surgery in the form of a, uh, an intertrochanteric osteotomy. Now, this man had quite a lot of shortening of his leg and with conventional implants, I could not have done a resurfacing and restore his leg length to normal. To restore his leg length to normal, I would have had to do a stemmed conventional total hip replacement if I didn't have the BMHR. But he was terribly young and terribly keen to avoid a total hip. Now there I've templated the, for the BMHR and here I'm positioning the implant more proximally than one would normally do. I'm using every drop of bone that he's got in his head to gain length in his leg and I'm going to sculpture the femoral head at surgery and turn what was femoral head into femoral neck and that worked very well you can see his post-operative film and there on the two-month x-ray you can already see that what was sculptured femoral head bone now is developing a cortex and turning into a new femoral neck for this patient and he is very pleased with his surgery a simpler situation here patient, a young patient who wanted a Birmingham hip resurfacing but he had cysts in the summit and in the superlateral aspect of his eroded femoral head just not suitable for a Birmingham hip resurfacing and instead I was able to do a BMHR and you can see there we have kept this implant system for this young man conservative but at the same time I have been able to deal with really bad bone in his femoral head. So we now have uh, great hopes for the BMHR implant. I've only been doing it just short of uh, four years. I've done about 40 uh, implants so far, but uh, no one has had a failure and uh, it's going to be very interesting to develop our experience with this implant over the next few years. Thank you for your attention.